Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine across from Douglas Park. We specialize in one-year-old, low mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them or see them on our website, BobWeberAutomart.com, we can save you between five dollars and $10,000 on your next almost new car purchase. I'm Michael Burke and this is Money Talks. Hi, welcome to Money Talks. Today we're at Johnson Outdoors and I'm really happy to have Dave Johnson, the Chief Financial Officer and Vice President of Johnson Outdoors mm -hmm. with me today. And uh, we're going to be talking about the fact that for the first time since late 2007, so about almost six years, mm -hmm. the company has just announced it's going to be paying a cash dividend to uh, right. its uh, uh, shareholders. First, let's just clarify one thing, Dave. You are in no way related to the Johnson family of Racine? No, I'm not. Okay, just one of those coincidences. Right, yeah. Um, Johnson Outdoors is the only publicly traded company of the Johnson family companies that, right. that are based in the Racine area. Mm -hmm. um, for those who may not know, let's just briefly uh, talk about what the company does. You're an outdoor recreation products manufacturer. Yes. What, are the, what are the four main divisions and what are some of the products that people might recognize the names of? Yeah, so we're, we have a, a variety of brands in our portfolio in the outdoor equipment space. We have Minn Kota trolling motors for fishing, hummingbird fish finders. Uh, you may know those. We have uh, Old Town canoes and kayaks, mm -hmm. ocean kayaks. We also have Eureka tents. And we have Scuba Pro scuba diving gear. Mm -hmm. So those are just a few of the brains we have. But yeah. they're all very well known in their space. Yeah, right. And they tend to be uh, higher end brands too. Yeah, we tend to focus on the higher end. We do service a wide variety, but we tend to focus on the enthusiasts that actually like to fish or camp or dive, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to late 2007 for a minute here and just talk about what were the conditions in the company that uh, led the company to decide it was going to pay a cash dividend and then what happened? Yeah, well, we were on a pretty good growth path uh, up through 2007 and until 2008, and we felt like we had, uh, you know, pretty good prospects. Um, so we decided to go ahead and declare a dividend in 2007, a quarterly dividend. And unfortunately, after about a year and a half, we had to stop that because of the Great Recession yeah. that hit. And in our space, uh, with discretionary products, um, you know, our sales really dipped quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So we had to stop the dividend in 2008 and kind of refocus our strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about how the company, uh, what it did in the interim to get back to the position where you were able to declare this dividend. Yeah, I mean, the, the nice thing about the recession is it did provide a lot of clarity on what we needed to do strategically. Um, and Helen really led the way with this. I mean, she Helen Johnson Leopold, Helen, the yeah, CEO, our, our CEO and, and chairman. Yeah, our leader, and um, she really provided uh, a clear path to really focus strategically again on the the enthusiast consumer. And we're all about research and development and innovation, so we protected that. But we also had to get our infrastructure costs right, and we focused on getting our inventories down, and really. Um, provide again we kind of shrunk our infrastructure but stayed focused on the enthusiast by doing that our balance sheet got in much better shape um, we had to unfortunately close down a, a plant or two we did some consolidation in Europe and now and some of the US too and some of the US too we did have we closed down a factory in, in Washington State and moved that to Old Town Maine um, and uh, now afterwards we're in much better shape we're on a, a growth path on the top line, and our bottom line has grown significantly. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to dive a little deeper into some of those moves that you made, but um, what areas did you not cut? Because you were telling me right. earlier that um, it was almost across the board that you guys ratcheted down on costs. Right. What we tried to protect was really our strategic assets, and, and like I said, we're, we're a branded company that focuses on innovation. So if you think about brand, consumer brands, um, we really needed to protect our new product stream, and so R and D uh, actually uh, we were actually higher in R and D now than we were pre-recession. Mm -hmm. And advertising promotion are important to us as well. So the marketing spend, 
we had to cut slightly, but we wanted to make to make sure we protected um, how we communicated to our consumers with our brands. Mm -hmm. um, everything else was pretty much fair game, uh, and it was tough going. I mean, it, uh, I, I'd like to try to forget it, but uh, we learned a lot of good lessons out of it. And like I said, focus on what's important and shrink the infrastructure uh, and stay close to the consumer. Now, you mentioned a couple times focusing on the important brands and products. What, did you let anything go? Um, we did. We had to um, we had to ask ourselves some tough questions on um, what markets we were serving, and is it really worth it or not? Um, and part of our inventory reduction was really about focusing our product lines. Pre before the recession, we had uh, products in bigger box retail stores um, and kind of across the board. We would sell a lot of different product lines, the lower end pricing. Um, coming out of that, we reduced our product lines. That helped reduce our inventory. And it provided a much more stronger connection to the enthusiast consumer, which I keep talking about. It, the nice thing about our categories is in each category, there's a pretty large population of folks who really love the sport. Mm -hmm. And they're very engaged in the sport. And that's So by category, for example, you mean marine electronics, uh, the, the real fishing enthusiasts? The real fishing enthusiasts, uh -huh. right. So the, the folks who lo love to fish, mm -hmm they're willing to spend extra money to help find a fish and catch a fish. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're there to help serve them. Camping's the same way, diving's the same way, uh, paddling, ca uh, canoes and kayaks. There are enthusiasts in all these categories. And by focusing on those consumer base, we were able both to shrink our costs, but also uh, service them much better. You actually had a couple product lines that you ended, that you got totally out of, right? Yes. What were um, those? Well, we, we, we did have a, a brand in, in uh, it was a European brand called Geonav that we got out of it, that was more uh, uh, marine electronics for the larger water. And so we exited that um, and, and stopped that. Uh, and it was based in Italy, so the European economy was even worse, um, kind of post-recession. And we've kind of refocused that back into the Hummingbird brand. So we've called down some of our brands. That's one example. Um, and again, it provides a much more strategic focus for us. You, had, you also mentioned earlier uh, Escape sailboats. Yes, we, uh, the Escape brand uh, was a sailboat brand that we had for a while. And we exited that business as well about three years ago. Um, the market wasn't really growing. And again, it was, it was a product line that wasn't really serving the enthusiast sailing uh, consumer, uh, so it didn't really fit with us, mm -hmm. so we exited that as well. Mm -hmm. um, you also made a change in, uh, you were outsourcing something to China and you actually opened a new plant. Talk yes. about that a little bit. Uh, just recently, um, some of our lower end trolling motors were being sourced out of China and um, we just opened up our own plant in Mexico, in Mexicali, Mexico, to make those uh, trolling motors. And it made a ton of sense for us. Uh, for and you took it in-house, just to be clear. It's not being outsourced. No, it's, it's our own plant. We took it in-house. Um, we make the majority of our trolling motors in Mankato, Minnesota, and that will stay. Uh, that, that's actually not being affected at all by this move. But we found that having the supply chain closer to our market, which the United States is our largest market for trolling motors, and actually the Mexican wage rate is now competitive with the Chinese wage rate. So mm -hmm. it just made sense from a cost savings standpoint as well as an inventory management standpoint. Because the Chinese rates are going up, right? They are. That's They're what increasing. we keep hearing. Yeah. Yes. Um, so you, and, and by the way, we shouldn't just skate over this, but you had some really successful product launches in those six years too, and, and product developments? We have, yes. And it's, it's uh, thank goodness we stayed focused on, on our core, which is the R&D piece of things. Uh, our Minn Kota product line has been doing very well the last couple of years with the iPilot and the iPilot Link which basically connects GPS with the trolling motor as well as our Hummingbird Fish Finder. So you can, you can have a product, you can tell the trolling motor where you want to go automatically. It's kind of an autopilot. It's pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing technology. It's really cool and it's done very, very well. Um, we've got some great new Hummingbird products out. Uh, we just launched a new fishing kayak, the Predator, uh, in our Old Town brand uh, just this past June and it's doing quite well. I also wrote a story that uh, touched on the, the Talon which is the uh, that's a great product really cool uh, anchor yes the town's an electronic anchor uh -huh. uh, for a fishing boat so instead of throwing out an anchor and disturbing the environment this is just a, a pole that goes straight down electronically 
and just burrows down into the ground. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's it's a great product as well. It's done quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now you're at the point where uh, what does the balance sheet look like and um, this dividend? Let's let's give some numbers here. It's a it's a seven and a half cent per share dividend. Right. But more fun, fundamentally, why does a company pay a dividend? You, you don't have to. No, we don't have to. And, and I think um, for us, um, it's, it's really about uh, providing another vehicle to give our shareholders some value. Uh, we're publicly traded. Our stock price has increased significantly over the past four, uh, four or five years, which has been great. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're a small company and we're thinly traded. So it's a little bit more difficult for investors to get in and out of our stock. Um, and our balance sheet and our performance really dictated that, hey, we've got excess here, we've got some capacity, we've got some cash, what are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. um, so as we look at our strategy, we've grown via acquisition, we've grown organically, internally, we'll continue to do that, most likely. Um, but we saw, we saw the fact that, hey, we could actually start paying a dividend again, and our shareholders deserve it. And, um, and it's an incentive to own Exactly, stock. and if you look at the public stock market, there uh, there's a faction of shareholders out there who actually seek dividends, and we're hoping to attract those to mm -hmm. our stock, and mm -hmm. that could that could actually have an effect, hopefully, to increase the stock price as well. How common is it to pay or not pay a dividend among your various competitors or others just in the outdoor? Uh, yeah, we products. we did a lot of benchmarking before we made the decision, and that and uh, we took a look at in the recreational product area. There are about 25 publicly traded companies. And about half pay dividends, mm -hmm. uh, and they have been growing. Uh, the trend has been to grow dividends uh, year over year. So, from my perspective, a lot of companies are in the same spot we are, which is we're out of the recession. There's still a lot of uncertainty out there, mm -hmm. but the balance sheets are better. There's cash out there, and we need to put it to good use. And one of those options is to pay a dividend. So. Uh, do the math for us. How many shares are there outstanding or in somebody's hands? And uh, so what does that seven and a half cents actually cost the company every quarter? Yeah, uh, so every quarter is going to be about one, uh, 1.25 million or so, or about $3 million in total for the year. Uh, seven and a half cents a share. There's about nine and a half uh, million shares out there. So call it about $3 million a year that we'll be spending on a dividend. Mm -hmm. um, and we just... Um, we, we have a new debt deal in place. We have a new debt agreement in place that we just put in place uh, in August. And that provides us still plenty of capacity to grow uh, and continue our strategy to grow either acquisition or organically and pay the dividend. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned too, acquisitions are a little hard to predict that you're going to have one or not have one in the next year or two years or whatever time frame. Yes. Um, we've been an acquisitive company in the past. Um, we just bought a company called Jetboil in November, uh, which is a camping stove uh, product line, which is terrific. Um, but those things are hard to come by. And um, we're proactive. We have, we're looking out in the marketplace. But um, you, the conditions just have to be right. You have to have a willing seller. The price has to be right. It's got to be the right product line, et cetera. And so hopefully we'll continue to be acquisitive. We'll keep the process going. But if we're not, we still have the dividend that we can pay to shareholders and reward them. And this dividend is, just to be clear, the the intent right now is just to keep paying it quarterly, as long as the conditions yes. are about the way they are now? Yes. We can't provide any guarantees, and we put the uncertainties into our, in our caveats, and et cetera, but our intent is to keep it going quarterly. Mm -hmm. Well, David Johnson, the Chief Financial Officer and Vice President of Johnson Outdoors, thanks a lot for being on Money Talks today. Really appreciate it. Thanks to our producer, Greg Shaver, and you've been watching Money Talks. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks, Mick. Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine across from Douglas Park. We specialize in one-year-old, low-mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them or see them on our website, bobweberautomart.com, we could save you between five and $10,000 on your next almost new car purchase.